Hi everyone, welcome back to the Casual Watch Review channel. Today I've got sort of a tutorial, although I would say this is for entertainment purposes only. I'm going to change the battery in one of these Breitling. This is the A68362. It's just on this model I'll be changing the battery. I've actually got two here that I recently purchased and I'm going to change the battery on both of them even though you can see this battery is completely dead in this one. And I'm not sure about the voltage on the battery here. Just a few little disclaimers before I start. This isn't one of my normal watch reviews, so it might be a bit boring if you don't own one of these watches. Also, I am not a professional watchmaker. I am not at all trained by Breitling or anything like that. I am just a hobbyist. So I am going to change the battery. These watches are quite uh, old now. They were made in 1997. So I'm going to have a go myself at changing the battery instead of taking it back to Breitling. Everything that is here, or more or less everything that is here, I will link in the description down below with an Amazon affiliate link if you want to have a go at this yourself. But try at your own risk. If you own one of these watches, of course, the clever thing to do is to go back to Breitling. But just for entertainment purposes and just to see if I can do it, I'm going to try and change the battery in here instead of spending, you know, upwards of $100 to get it replaced by Breitling officially. So these watches run off batteries that are CR2320s. Now, this might seem like a familiar battery number because the most common battery that is used across electronics is this CR2320. And it's that common that I got sort of in a confirmational bias and I just bought these thinking, oh, it must be the CR2032 but it's not. They're actually called CR2320. So very similar. And in fact, if you look on Amazon, it also brings up these as well. Other things to note before we kick off here is the battery, the case back on these Breitling watches is particular. So you can't use a traditional watch case opener like this. So the majority of case backs have either this or a snapback you can't use one of these also you, if you're searching on ebay you'll see these and they're about ten dollars each and if you see they look as if they're correct for a breitling watch there's a 36 millimeter and a 35 one both of these will not work uh, i should have done more research online because you can find online that it will tell you that these won't work. I just went for it and bought them. Both of them will not work. What that means is that because this is a very particular case back, you have to buy a specialist case back opening tool. And not only are they hard to find, this is the only seller on Amazon that sells them, but they're very expensive. So this, this just this piece alone cost me $85. If you equate that over having to change the battery every three to five years, you will end up saving money. But just so you know, I had to, I wasted $20 buying those other ones and then found this one and took a gamble on it. And $85 for this is very expensive. It's at least 50% more expensive than it needs to be, I think. Now, if you notice, it's got this interesting shape on the top here. This is to fit professional watchmakers case opening tool. Now, obviously, I don't have one of those. So I bought one of these handles. And if you see, this is absolutely massive. I bought this second hand off eBay because these are also very expensive as well. But if you see the two parts go together and then it fastens up here. So we'll be using this to open these watch case backs. Other things I've got on here as well. I've got some silicon grease here or silicon sealant so we can redo the o-ring in here to increase the water resistance although these only have a 50 meter water resistance so i wouldn't go swimming with them anyway and really once you do open the case back you should really replace them i have got some replacement gaskets on the way but they're coming from china and they're taking ages so i thought i'd at least get this upload out other tools that i'm using is this plastic pick here and that is to actually get the battery out from the inside i'm also going to brace the watch case with this so i can get the watch back case back off 
I've got one of these strap removal tools and also these things as well. If you've not seen these, these are finger cots. They're pr to protect your fingers or protect grease getting on the watch movement inside. They're probably overkill because I won't be touching the back, the in inner workings of the watch case, but I thought I'd put them on anyway. Okay, so let's kick this off here. Again, please, this is just for entertainment purposes. There's a high chance that I might mess this up. I've not done this before, so you're seeing this for the first time, you're giving it a go. Let's first change the battery on this one where the battery is completely dead. One of the indicators, there is an end of life indicator on these Breitling watches that will tell you when the battery's near to the end. But what I found on this one in particular is the backlight also stops working as well so we're bracing the watch in here making sure not to tighten it on any of the buttons here and then we'll use this case back tool to get the case back off now you'll know this fits because it fits extremely snugly here and then if i just twist that off there so I'll put that to one side i won't open them both at the same time because the serial number is in the back of this so you don't want to obviously mix the serial numbers of the case back open so let's just take this part off here. So here you can see this is where the alarm piece is or the speaker for the alarm. I couldn't find another brand other than this Renata that sell these watch batteries. Got the serial number there and then brightling on the inside what i'll do is i'll try and get this battery out i don't want to use a metal tool on here because i don't want to damage anything or short anything out and it looks like from this little bit of scratching here that this might be the correct place to to pop it out so the battery is out here there's this protective piece of plastic here I i'm not going to take this out but i am going to just remove it just to show you underneath if you're interested i know i certainly am that's what the movement looks like underneath. I'll just put this back on here so as to protect it. So here we can see this is for the alarm here. So you've got to be very careful not to damage that piece. This is one side of the battery connector and then the other one is, is here. So we'll just put that battery in. What I'll do is we'll quickly flip this over to make sure that the watch has started to work. So the watch is working. You can see there we've got a series of eights and things like that. You can see the watch is sort of powering on there. So let's start putting the new case back on. I'm not going to. I thought I might replace this gasket now, but it looks to be in good condition. So I'm going to leave it on there. So let's put this back on. And we've got the case back here. I'm not sure if there's a special way to have this line up. So I'm just, I'm just screwing it on. I'm sure there might be a, a certain path so that this lines up correctly. And there we have the watch ticking away. Now the analog at the bottom here is now different from the hands. So the only way I've found to do this is to essentially set the current time. So the current time according to this Breitling that's working here. 10.24 a.m. As we can see here, the time at the bottom is 10.25, which is the current time. But both the hour, the hour hand and the second hand are out of sync. So what you need to do is you need to go back to this dark display here, open the crown out, and then move the time. So you'll actually move the hour hand round. So we want to move it round one more time there. So now we're on 10. 26 we put that in but as you see the second hand is still out of alignment now there might be a better way of doing this but the way that i found was to essentially go to the chronograph 
here, pull the chronograph crown out. And if you see it's nowhere near the 12, we need to reset it back to 12. So you can actually rotate the crown until it goes back to 12, push it in there. And then if we go through to the normal timekeeping mode, you'll see that it's now correct. It comes around here now. 10 was spot on there. Also, the light should work now as well. Yeah, very nice. So there's the battery replacement on this Breitling B1. Next one, I'm going to replace the battery on this one as well. So here's my other Breitling B1. I'm going to change the battery on this as well because I've just recently bought this off eBay and I have no idea how long the battery's been in there. And considering the batteries only cost me $7 for five, I might as well replace the battery in here as well. This bracelet is quite difficult to get off the watch. So one of the things that I found might be easier to do is to take the spring bar tool off at the clasp. So let's take the spring bar off here at the clasp. So that was just one spring bar there. And then you see now we've got the watch is easy to access the back. So here we have both watches with their batteries replaced. It wasn't that difficult to do, but obviously there is a lot of risk. These are expensive watches. If you're not familiar with how, how to change a battery on a watch, also because they're quartz, there's a lot of, as with mechanical, there's a lot of very tiny parts that can be easily damaged. These quartz movements in here, from what I've been reading on the forums, they can't be repaired. They have to replace the entire movement. So you do run a risk of permanently damaging your watch so again just for entertainment purposes so let's just talk about what this cost me so i had to buy this specialist tool and this was by far the most expensive part the die part was 85 dollars, and then the handle part i bought second hand off ebay but they also do sell these on amazon the batteries was probably the most cost effective part they were five for around $7.50 as well. This, this watch holder here, these are fairly inexpensive as well. And then I do have some new gaskets that are on their way as well. Um, and they were fairly inexpensive, along with this silicon grease as well was fairly inexpensive. So in all, it's probably cost me around about $100 with the lion's share of that being this tool here. But again, this tool will last forever and ever and ever. So you, as long as you keep these watches, this tool will still be used. So your average cost over, you know, maybe 10 years with three battery changes in each of these once every three years, then you will probably, you will be saving money over taking it to a watchmaker. This was just a little tutorial. I know it's departure from my usual watch reviews. I will be reviewing both of these Breitling models. This is a very special model. As you can see, it's got military insignia on it here. If this is the first upload of mine you're watching, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. We also have have a podcast about 45 minutes each episode audio podcast a lot of fun on that again just a little entertainment tutorial here i appreciate you watching let me know in the comment section down below if you've got any questions and i'll see you next time on the casual watch review channel thanks guys bye